And for the next two, do we give a very high level overview, but um, we don't do as many examples? Yeah, yeah, like uh, we we will run through some some examples, but uh, but yeah, so we we won't necessarily because these are very dependent on your program, so mm -hmm. we don't necessarily like. Yeah. It's very hard to do like a like a good example because it depends on what program you're using. Yeah. But we can we can demonstrate how the queue thinks about these things. Yeah. So okay. the array job, like if we think about the array job that we just had, uh we are running basically the same serial job, but we're just running with with more of those. <laughs> we are running more of those uh simultaneously yeah. and, and separately of, the, of each other. Yeah. But all of those will like let's say if we run one of those and we that takes like an hour to run, mm -hmm. the other ones will also most likely take an hour to run as well if they're quite similar jobs. Right. Yeah. But in many cases, you would want it to run faster. You want it mm -hmm. to actually finish faster, and and in that case, you you might want to increase try to use multiple processors to make it run faster, mm -hmm. and. The first question here is that can your program actually do it? Does your program uh, support multiple processors so that it can internally run faster? Mm -hmm. So if we look at the picture below, uh, again, we see that like in these shared memory jobs, all yeah. of the, like we get for the one single job, uh, and I mean like, like, Again, like let's focus. Let's let, like put the array idea that we had and put that in the back, back of our mind. But let's mm -hmm. think about the serial job. We start one. We submit one job first uh, to the queue, and in the shared memory job, we would want to give this one job more resources. We wanted to give that to have access to multiple CPUs. So in the array job, we had individual jobs that are completely independent, and all of those were running with one CPU. But in this case, we want to give like, okay, let's have one, one of these like uh, scripts, and let this script should be able to use multiple CPUs. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to ask for these resources. So you can just give this. Uh, that's the CPUs per task, and then then a number uh, in this S batch so like comment. This here, okay. Yes. Yeah. And and you can then reserve multiple CPUs for a job. Okay. The question mm -hmm. is that does your program actually use those, or can it use those? Mm -hmm. And and in many cases, the program might recognize that there's multiple processes there, uh, and in some cases, it doesn't. And what is usually important that you, in your program, if you need, see something like uh, n tasks or n n procs or n CPUs or CPUs or mm -hmm. the processors processes something like this, like a flag that tells that okay, this can be run in parallel. You what you usually want to do is you want this number that the process like what the program takes in to be equal to the number of processors you have requested from the queue. And this doesn't so, happen automatically all the time. Yes, it, 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 do, it doesn't because like the program doesn't know where it's being run. Like the program doesn't understand that it's in a computer cluster. It's being run in this like allocation of, let's say, four CPUs. The, it, the program doesn't necessarily know that Okay, I've been given like four CPUs, mm -hmm. and it will. It might see that there's like forty CPUs or hundred CPUs in the machine, uh -huh. and it might think that hey, I can go, I can go full ham, and I can, I can take all of these CPUs. But yeah. in the reality, it's all only been given four. Yeah. So yeah. you might get like completely like overloaded mm -hmm. by, uh, <laughs> by having like the program might start like hundred process uh, processes. Yeah. Uh, on those four CPUs. So what you usually yeah. want to do is you want to check your program, where your program takes the value of, like how many, how many, how much parallelism I should use, yeah. how much parallelism I should do, and then make certain that that number matches the requested CPU number. Okay. 
I think I remember some mention of this at the bottom of the page. Should we look there now or maybe come back to it after we can scene? We can maybe come back to it, but maybe okay. we should just yeah. like this is too theoretical. Let's just run <laughs> okay. something and see if yeah. it's faster. <laughs> okay. So I'll scroll down some. Um where's an example? Here's an example. Running an example shared memory memory program. Yeah. So, so the program here is the same Py script that we have used as an example. Mm -hmm. And and it has this flag called dash dash n procs. So how many pros mm -hmm. uh, like it uses Python multiprocessing to start do the calculation yeah. in parallel. And any if you give it the number, then uh, it will use multiple processors. Yeah. Okay. So let's so, try running this example over here. So CPUs per task equals two. So I tell it two processors. Yes. yes. Uh, and then. Minutes. And the usual suspects like the memory and time, and, and then we call it, and then the number of processes. And do note that now Richard is putting the numbers to be like the same on on, like the number of CPUs per task and the number of processes. Uh, yeah, it's the same. <laughs> it's the same over here. So mm -hmm. let's try running it. Okay. Okay, it uh, here it says yeah. using two processes. I guess that's the program yeah. printing that out. Yeah, yeah. it uh, it knows that it now needs to use multiple processes. So maybe yeah. let's try it out. Like, can you put time at the start of the call? Okay. So let's um... in Linux, there's this program called time that you can put if you put it before the S run. Or, yeah, before, before that. Python. Yeah, before yeah. that. Yeah, that's okay. Good. Yeah, that's. So, I... so what the time does is that it will give some like timing information, like how long yeah. did the program execution take? Mm -hmm. Let's try it out and, and see how long it took. 0. 0.91 seconds user. Uh, maybe we should add a zero there into the number of. Okay. So now we're running 10 times mm -hmm. more. Yeah. So two processes. So it says 8.7 seconds user time mm -hmm. and 4.4 seconds elapsed. So it did go about twice as fast. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not quite... We also note that time also produces this like 198% CPU. Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can also use the SF that we previously oh. yesterday talked about to see the, the utilization. Okay. So if you use the SF and the job ID, yeah. we can quickly check that the utilization, what was it? So, mm, yeah. nine seconds. Here yeah. it says so, only 112. Yeah, it might be but... that uh, like maybe it didn't have time to, like because it's so short, yeah. maybe it didn't have time to measure it correctly. Yeah, probably. Uh, Probably Makes that sense. is okay. Yeah. So so it was it wasn't that bad, right? Like, yeah, I like mean, it's not, not yeah. Is, what happens if I don't give the n prox here? Let's try it out. So so if Okay. If you run run it like that without the n prox. I remove n prox. So it most likely will take about 16 seconds, so I would assume, like if the previous one was eight. So it took, oh, it was. It used 8.4 seconds of CPU and took 8.5. Mm. Yeah. So basically it only ran on one CPU. Yeah. And everything, Yeah. like we wasted one CPU. What happens if I use four CPUs or I request four CPUs? Or um, I go like this. Yeah, let's, so let's I use, see. So I'm telling the program yeah, to use yeah. more CPUs than. Put, put something bigger there. Put something like 32 or something. Oh. Like so that we see an okay. actual like yeah. uh, thing there. Yeah. 
So now we are like overbooking basically the CPUs. We have only requested two CPUs, but we are running 32 processors yeah. there. So, um, so you sorry. notice that it didn't run any faster or any slower here. Yeah. Yeah. So you notice that it ran so. the same speed basically as the as if it if it would have uh, two CPUs. Uh, but but the difference is like this is a toy program. If the program would do something like really complicated, it would mm -hmm. slow down the program yeah. because it's oversubscribed. It definitely a good... can slow down. Yeah. There's okay. a good question in the in the notes that uh what is the difference and benefit of allocating multiple CPUs for a single program against uh, allocating multiple arrays or like I I assume like multiple uh, jobs mm -hmm. in an array. Mm -hmm. And th th that's an excellent question because like it it raises the question that which is better? Like, is it better to to run one program twice as fast, but run it like multiple? Like, is it better to run one program twice as yeah. fast for double the time, uh, mm -hmm. for du for double the like parameters, or yeah. or is it better to run two individual programs mm -hmm. uh, with different parameters? So basically, is it better to divide the program among parameters or or like just run it as fast as possible, but then go through multiple parameters. Yeah. And usually the case is that it's 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 usually easier to do the embarrassingly parallel route. Like it's if you want to do maximum throughput or you want to do maximum amount of like jobs, maximum amount of parameters and whatever, it's usually better to use small jobs than big jobs. Mm -hmm. So does it depend on the scaling? So in here, this program, mm -hmm. This is this program is actually under the hood, basically embarrassingly parallel. It divides it up, each one runs separately. Um, but some jobs get slower the more processors you add to it. So yeah. in that case, it's better to not use too many and use arrays instead. And I guess yeah. you can combine both of them at the same time. Yeah, like the thing that you get with running with multiple processors is that like if your program takes a long time to run, like let's say it takes ten hours to run, you don't mm -hmm. you want the results today, not in ten hours. You like mm -hmm. you, when you submit a job, you want them to do uh, done so that you yeah. can look at them earlier. And in that case, if your pro program can be parallelized, it's possible to uh, to maybe get them faster the results, yeah. and you can mm -hmm. view them faster. <laughs> And okay. also, if the program is is big enough that it can, it just t would take way too much time to mm -hmm. run. Mm -hmm. uh, I it, guess it's yeah it, good to parallelize it then. That's like the whole point of the cluster to get stuff done faster, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So should we continue scrolling yeah. down, or is there anything yeah, else here? The... Tell me yeah. when to stop. Common. Uh, I, I would cases. let's let's look at the example of the submission script. How oh. we would write it as a submission script. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So previously, Richard ran the example with the from the like an interactive job, but mm -hmm. we can also run this in, a, of course, in a submission yeah. script, and that's a better way of running it to write it into mm -hmm. a serial script. Yeah. So so in this case, like if you copy the script. Ah, so I should or, or modify the existing this. yeah ah, modify if you, if you... the previous script wasn't a Py example though so yeah I will yeah maybe maybe we want to do a completely ah. new one okay I'll copy most of this mm. over yeah so so s batch. So two per task. Yeah. And now, because we are running this in the script, we can utilize the environment variable that Slurm sets. So we can utilize this environment variable called Slurm CPUs per task, uh, to, so that so that we, like Slurm will fit when when the code is being run. That will, environment variable will contain similar to what the array ID was. It will contain the number of CPUs reserved uh, for the 
for this program. So it will automatically fit that. And that, that this is very helpful if you're like running something and first you run it with, and you want to test out, for example, scaling of the program, how, how well it behaves if it, if you run it with one CPU, if you run it with two CPUs, four, eight, 16, and so forth. Um, it's usually a good idea to, to use this environment variable because then you can uh, easily test out different CPU numbers and you don't have to go into your program code or something to change the number to match the request number. Yeah, okay. So let's submit it. Uh, X and yes. Do you think it will work? Um, the command. Let's yeah. see. If you look at the slam Q, what is probably run so already? It's yeah. running. I added an extra zero yeah. there, so it would run a bit oh, slower. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it finished. Yeah. Okay. So um, if we but... look at the output. I'll cat it using two processes. Um, mm. Yeah. Okay. Should we SF yeah. it? Yeah. And also in the in the in the chat there uh, or in the notes there was a good question of like I used the same term processes and processors and like all of this million of words, like the <laughs> CPU, there's yeah. core, there's process, mm -hmm. there's processor, sometimes there's thread or some mentioned, like, like all of these have their own like specific different meaning, but they're basically like, like used in places like as synonyms in many cases, mm -hmm. like, like there are technical differences to all of these words, but, and the CPU and all of these, like you shouldn't necessarily worry about it. Like it, then the most important thing to note is that, that there are something like in the program, there's something that it can do. It can execute two programs at the same time within the same program, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and like, and, and to do that, it should have a place to run it basically. Yeah. So you're, mm -hmm. you're like, like if you have, a, if you go back to the pasta analogy, instead of like just cooking pasta in one pot, we are now cooking pasta in two pots or we are, mm -hmm. we are, we're doing like in two, two pots in two burners, like, um, yeah. Or stove tops. Like, so, so we just add more like stuff there. Yeah. So yeah, like what, whatever term is used, like if the program developers, they will also use it all kinds of terms interchangeably all the time. So don't worry about it too much. And that's why I was saying that like, you should look for these like various terms mm -hmm. because like, you'll never know what is the term used by the developer. The <laughs> they might talk yeah. about the process. They might talk about number of CPUs, number of processors, mm -hmm. number of tasks, like number of jobs, yeah. like, like the terming terms might be different, but the important thing is to know that, okay, these refer to, okay, how many processors or CPUs yeah. you want to use yeah. and, and to match that with the number of CPUs that you request from the queue mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and for the queue, the important thing is the CPUs per task. Yeah. Should I run SF on this thing we just did? Sure. And it looks pretty much like before. So not perfect efficiency, but mm. It's so short that's expected. Yeah. And do note that here the CPU efficiency refers to the size of the request that like the reservation. Mm -hmm. So the CPU efficiency is like <laughs> with respect to yeah. the uh, amount of processors yeah. requested. Yeah. So so hundred percent would mean that you're using all of the requested CPUs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think you've said this before, but the most important thing to me is that this nprox get aut gets automatically detected from Slurm, so I only have to keep it up to date in one place, mm -hmm. which seems like it would save me a lot of time and effort and doing stuff wrong. Yeah. Below, okay. uh, if we scroll a bit below, there's like this uh, using uh, 
Slurm CP per task efficiently, and the, you can reuse this basically also for the R, uh, the array task ID. Mm -hmm. So so here's a few examples on how you can use this okay. uh, yeah. this parameter. So for example, in Python, like in the in the middle there, mm -hmm. you can use the OS module uh, to to get mm -hmm. that environment variable. So in this yeah. case, like if the variable is set. Yeah, it's it. The value of that is converted into an integer. It, uh, if it's not set, the default okay. value is num one. Is one. Yeah. So you, yeah. Okay. So you can use this uh, for when you, in your yeah. program uh, to to like you can write this there so that it automatically detects how many CPUs you're yeah. using, and and, and then you can R. use the n CPUs in your like to give it to a library or something. Yeah. And same to MATLAB. Okay, yeah, so yeah. basically programs. So if programs were well designed, they would all use something like this to automatically detect number of uh, processors available. Okay. And and this yeah. is like, the, there is one extra, like maybe I will add one extra like technical thing, like there is no standard on how many CPUs you're going to be used. The closest thing to a standard that is used by many programs is this so-called OMP num threads. Mm -hmm. It's mentioned above uh, there in the in the multi-threaded versus multi-process oh. and double booking section. Here, uh, but but you can read the whole whole thing yeah, if you okay. want. Like there's a tech here's the technical stuff if you're interested. Mm -hmm. But but the important thing is that many programs, for example, like NumPy libraries in Python they utilize like internal parallelism already and it's used it's done using this technology called openmp open multi processing yeah and that uh that basically detects uh or it takes this variable this omp num threads that like describes how many processors it should use mm -hmm. and and uh, like this, this is uh, like used in many programs. Like many programs yeah. use this as this kind of like shorthand for how many mm -hmm. how many processors you should use for the parallelism. Yeah. So it, the, this is quite common for programs that don't even use uh, OpenMP to do the yeah. parallelism. So mm -hmm. this is the only like standard that is basically defined. Otherwise, it's it's like a wild west that everybody yeah. uses their different environment variables for how yeah. many processors to use. Yeah, OK. So we have three minutes before we need to go to a break. Should we, what should we do? Um, I propose we can see if there's any further questions. Go to the break. We can quickly discuss the MPI parallelism along with GPUs. So. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's see. All right. What, what else yeah. is there? I think Seema already answered the processes versus processors. So if you want to go deep into the computer architecture, you can learn all kinds of things about how Unix systems handle processes and threads and things like that. But for the most part, if you know the options that are present in this page, you can figure out how to run something and then you don't need to know more. And you're, uh, I will, yeah. Yeah, you're probably oh, I will here. Quick... <laughs> yeah, you're probably here because you want to do science stuff and not learn about computer architecture. Yeah. I will quickly mention that, uh, like a common thing that happens to many many uh, researchers is that, let's say you run a code in your laptop, and your laptop, like I mentioned mm -hmm. previously, they nowadays have multiple processors there, and in many cases, mm -hmm. if you run like this code that can do multi-processing in internal, like it can do something in with parallel, mm -hmm. it, like without you noticing, basically. You don't even notice, like the Zoom that I'm using now, it's doing something multi-processing uh, on the background. Mm -hmm. I don't even know about it, like, but it's it's doing it to, yeah. to make certain that the video stream is correct and yeah. the audio is processed correctly. It's doing multi-processing in the background. And and in in my laptop, it, it just assumes that 
okay, I can use whatever resources are available there. And mm -hmm. when user, when people uh, and resources go to the cluster where you need to actually request the resources, the programs usually just think that, okay, they, they will look at the hardware where that is like that is there. They, they see a server with 128 CPUs. And yeah. and maybe maybe when in the job request, uh, you might forget to add the CPUs per task flag. So mm -hmm. then when you run the co code in the like the cluster, it's suddenly much slower. It's much mm -hmm. like it suddenly takes four times as much time or eight mm -hmm. times as much time. And then you like you might wonder like okay what's going wrong like am i doing something wrong because it's so much slower in the computing cluster mm -hmm. maybe the computing cluster is is a pile of crap and i don't want yeah. to use that <laughs> but but the reality is that mm -hmm. uh you it it the program doesn't necessarily know about that each like what what number of processors it should use and also it, the program doesn't have access to all of those processors because mm -hmm. those are being reserved by other jobs in the queue. Yeah. So the you you when you are running a program in the cluster, it's usually a good idea to like just run it with multiple um, yeah. CPUs per task and see how it goes. And you can also look at your own task manager in your own laptop and see see like how many processes do you see the like processes being used while yeah. I run my code. Yeah. And just mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. decipher, does it use some multiprocessing? Yeah. Okay, so we need to go to the break so we don't get too far behind. Um, yeah. So, uh, break until uh, one minute past the hour. And then we have the talk on CSE resources. So, see you soon. Bye. Bye.